Hey there, this is Rick. I hope everyone's having a great day. This is a video on my van build. Yes, I finally managed to cobble together all of the um, the photographs that I've taken and I've, I'm going to compile them into this video and I'm just basically going to talk you through each of the photographs and I, what I did was when I did my van build from obviously from a basic panel van to a camper van or to a motorhome um, I took photographs step by step along the way so that I could then make this video and kind of tell the story of how um, it was built. Now what we got here is a Renault Traffic 2008. Uh, I bought it last year in 2012, right at the end of um, sort of November, I think. And it basically took me about a month to do the van build. Now I wasn't going for anything too spectacular or anything too posh. All I wanted was something that was just going to be nice and functional and basic. Um, that was going to serve its purpose as my everyday vehicle but also had the option for a day van and for something I could go camping in as well. So as you'll see from the pictures as they come along um, you will obviously get to see how I did that. So we started out life with just an empty box and the first thing you need to do is think about insulation. So the type of insulation I used in this one this time round was a sandwich of uh, mylar triple layer bubble wrap and a kind of a foam, it's like a, a high density foam sheeting which uh, I can only just describe as being a bit like a yoga mat and uh, I bought several rolls of that and several rolls of the bubble wrap and I basically sandwiched the foam in between two sheets of the bubble wrap. So here you see, uh, first of all, the sheets of bubble wrap. This is triple layer mylar bubble wrap. And I've just basically stuck it to all of the outer metal panels and um, got it in as many of the nooks and crannies as I could get. And it's in direct contact with the metal skin of the van wherever possible. And that basically was the very first layer of insulation. Next up was the rolls of foam. Now this has two purposes. Firstly, it insulates, um, you know, helps to keep the cold out, but it also acts as a sound barrier. And I did notice the van was significantly quieter when I'd put this stuff all over the inside of the van. Of course, I'd used, also used spray contact adhesive to glue the bubble wrap to the skin of the van. Then finally, another layer of bubble wrap on top of the foam. And this is what gives us our sort of insulation sandwich. And obviously I tried to get this insulation wherever I could. Now I am adding the floor. This was a floor and walls panel lining kit that I bought. Uh, the kit was already cut. I think they stick it on a big laser cutter and cut it out specifically for your type of van. And the floor was literally screwed down using self-drilling screws. It's a nine millimeter ply. And yes, to be honest, I could have cut out uh, all the panels and made them myself, but time was of the issue here. And it worked out also by the time I'd actually bought all the sheets of 9mm ply, it wouldn't have been much cheaper um, than it was just by buying the, the, the ready cut kit. So I saved a lot of time there and a lot of hassle as well. Here's some more pictures of the insulation going up on the ceiling and in the side walls. Exactly the same principle, um, bubble wrap against the skin, then foam, then more bubble wrap. So you've got this foam sandwich between two sheets of bubble wrap. Next it was time to add the windows. Obviously a very scary uh, time because I'm drilling holes in the, the sides of the, the van. Uh, basically the idea was that um, you drill little pilot holes and they uh, then kind of give you a rough idea of where you've got to cut the panel out. So there's the pilot holes and you literally just do a kind of join the dots thing. 
and that becomes your target line for your jigsaw which you use to cut out the panel cut out the hole there now I'm using bonded windows so they were very very simple and straightforward to fit you literally just stick a big bead of this special glue this black gunge all the way around the window and you literally just stick it on uh, and it was very very straightforward to do I did the entire van's rear windows in one Saturday afternoon um, and it was surprisingly easy now they say you're supposed to you know sort of hold it in place with tape and stuff like that but I found the window sort of started sagging so a good little trick that I I saw in a different video actually was um, putting the the window suckers on the inside and then using a really strong bungee cord to sort of pull the window into place as the glue dried uh, rather than sort of just relying on the uh, the masking tape to hold it into place and um, that worked really well the glue would sort of set after it's just sort of about half an hour and then it was pretty much drivable after a couple of hours so it was fast setting stuff there's the windows going on the rear now the panel immediately behind the driver's seat uh, I decided I wasn't going to put a window in there uh, because that's where the bathroom was going so it would make life a lot easier if I didn't actually have a window there this is the overhead um, storage area just above the cab and once again that's all covered in insulation now the wood panelling kit also came with uh, rear door covers and side covers so it was just a case of screwing those into place. Now obviously the side panels I needed to cut out uh, the holes where the windows were so for that I used the big metal off cuts that, uh, that actually came off the van when I cut them out. I literally just drew around them and obviously cut out the window obviously making sure it was in exactly the right place it needed to be. Now the thing about the Renault is it's not a perfect van to do a conversion on because none of the interior walls are very straight and um, there was an awful lot of bending and sort of persuading for the side walls to kind of you know fit into place as you can see there there's a lot of curving going on there that uh, obviously you're going to need to fill in a bit later on. Next up is putting the ceiling on uh, literally I just needed to put a few wooden battens in certain areas just to kind of marry everything up with the height of the ribs that run across the roof and I just then used sheets of I think it was four mil ply um, and just attached them directly to the ribs of the roof obviously not the roof itself because the roof skin is very very thin and uh, screws would have just gone through the roof to the outside so obviously it's important to um, attach just to the ribs but yeah it was a much easier doing it in sort of small strips rather than sort of huge great pieces there we go that's the whole ceiling covered with four mil ply and obviously it doesn't look ideal at the moment but it's all going to be covered with the gray roof lining felt so you're not going to see any of the joins or anything like that it's all going to look fantastic when it's finished now here on this particular van because the height of the side door doesn't go the actual height of the roof i had a few issues where i kept smacking my head on the the door runner so what i decided to do was uh, i would do something about that before i put the roof lining on so i got some basic pipe lagging and fitted it to uh, above the sliding door but also above where the cab goes through into the back because I was hitting my head on that as well so I thought I'll put that into place and then obviously I get the roof lining to go over the top of it and uh, so you'd end up with this kind of you know soft squidgy area that uh, if you did smack your head it wouldn't uh, wouldn't hurt so much just more shots of the ceiling and then our good old friend duct tape uh, was used to cover up all of the gaps in the wood in the ceiling and uh, to cover and smooth over anything that needed smoothing 
or in this case uh, the lagging needed kind of a little bit of support to, at one end there's the roof lining felt and uh, once everything had been covered up there it was just a case of fitting the felt unfortunately I didn't get any video footage or, or shots of me fitting the felt it was a pain in the rear to do but it was just held up with spray contact adhesive and um, I would definitely recommend it's a two-man job I tried doing it on my own I did do it on my own in the end but it was I was <laughs> the air was blue I was swearing and cursing most of the time because it was such a pain to do but um, if there was more than one of you it'd be a lot a lot easier so the beauty of the roof felt is it kind of molds itself into all the little nooks and crannies and stuff so it's uh, it's a really good forgiving material to work with then it was a case of just adding more roof lining to all the little sort of the upright pillars and uh, all the areas that were otherwise going to be exposed Now here I used uh, a white or a cream leatherette to cover up uh, the side walls because obviously they're going to be exposed in the uh, in the final van so I wanted them to look a little bit nice so um, I just again used contact adhesive to stick those straight onto the wood same on the other side there and on any of the exposed panels so the side door and the rear door panels um, I covered them all with the white leatherette okay so now we've got a nice side wall but we've got this huge gap between the window and the wall so what I did was I got some offcuts of upholstery foam and literally just kind of stuffed them into the gap uh, you know as uh, kind of as smoothly as I possibly could then I just used small amounts of roof lining material to tuck in either side of the foam and there we have the window lined uh, with not much fuss. I didn't stick any of that roof lining in, uh, so it's literally just tucked into place, but it's absolutely fine. It hasn't, hasn't moved at all. So with the windows in place and everything covered up, it's now time to build the bathroom. Now I had two things against me with the bathroom. Firstly, I was very limited for the size in order to have a six foot bed which is a legal requirement for the insurance um, now the bed was going to be on the driver's side which is on the right hand side in the picture you see here so I could only make the bathroom sort of go so far back from the driver's seat area um, but also I could only make the bathroom go so wide because I still needed to have enough room to be able to walk through from the cab so it was a bit of a juggling act but I finally decided on a final size and then it was literally a case of just building this kind of stud wall. Now in order to get a good fit I used cardboard to make an initial template and I used that template to cut out the 6mm plywood. So there we see the bathroom with the first wall in place. So you can see obviously where the bathroom door is going to be so there's another full-size cardboard template that I made first and then I used that to cut out the sheet of 6mm ply and there it is in place there's the front panel on the bathroom and obviously I need to make a door a bit later on to uh, cover that hole up okay next up is the seat boxes and they're very simply made you just make a very basic structure out of wood and then you clad it over with plywood or you know a material of your choice so there we go that's the uh, rearward facing seat and obviously on the top I've got um, a, a lid which allows storage inside the seat box here's the rear forward facing seat and that's once again just a very simple structure that will be clad over later on and obviously both seats lift up so you have storage space inside there we have the door on the bathroom and the door has been edged with uh, edging strip now I have made a video on how to edge doors and I will make sure there's a link to 
uh, that video in the notes of this video. And the bathroom door is just held in place with simple um, furniture hinges. Nothing too complicated at all. Now, with the seat boxes built and the bathroom built, it's time to build the main galley kitchen. Now for the galley kitchen, I basically started off with a, a kind of an A frame, which I, I made, and that was gonna run the entire length of the, uh, the kitchen work unit. Here you see a 72 litre off the shelf Fiamma fresh water container. And the plan all along was to make the galley kitchen the exact width of that container um, so that the container is kind of built into the bottom of the, the galley kitchen. Now the container is positioned in such a way that I can access it to fill it up from the side door. So where you see it in this photograph, that's basically going to be its final um, home position. Also at the back of the galley kitchen, there's going to be a gas box. Uh, I'm using the uh, Eurogas 907 bottles and I intend to make a gas locker that's going to be big enough to fit two bottles. So here's a few more pictures of the galley kitchen being built. The Water tank is bolted down in four positions uh, through the floor, so it doesn't go anywhere. But as you can see, snug as a bug, that tank is exactly the same size as the galley kitchen unit. Now here we have the initial makings of the gas box. Uh, unfortunately, I got my measurements wrong and this particular photograph shows it being too close to the back doors. So I had to alter it and uh, just a little bit. So it's pulled away from the back doors. Here we have the seat boxes now clad with six mil ply. Now all of the visible surfaces are going to be covered with a sticky back vinyl plastic a little bit later on. Here again is our good old friend duct tape and I'm actually using it to create the apertures for the doors, which I will add later on. So there's more cladding going on. So here we are cladding the very rear of the back seat box. And as you can see, there are the target lines for the doorway. And there it is screwed into place with the doorway in position. Same again, now starting to clad the kitchen unit and you can see the doorway for the gas box there. This is looking into the gas box. Now the whole thing has to be sealed from the living area and I shall go over it with sealant uh, a bit later on. Also, the gas box has to have a dropout hole and uh, I use, I think it was a 40 mil pipeline to, uh, to do that. Obviously, gas is heavier than air, so if it does leak, it's gonna kind of pool on the floor. So if you've got a dropout hole, it can leak to the outside and uh, not blow your van up. There's the waste pipe and that's going to be used to line the hole to the outside. So there we have the finished gas box with the dropout hole sealed into place with, uh, I think that's probably no more nails that I used there. As you can see, the galley is now taking shape and uh, you can also see the leisure battery there. Now the battery is in its own uh, battery box so that if it does happen to leak anywhere, it's not gonna go all over the floor. It's just literally gonna be contained within that, uh, that box there. Now the main structure of the galley kitchen unit is uh, finished. I can then start adding sort of surfaces, shelves that uh, I can actually physically put things onto. This is the area where I can fill up with fresh water and there'll be a door on the outside of that as well. Now, in order for the, the sticky vinyl or fablon, which I'm using, uh, to stick well to the sheets of wood, um, I need to treat the wood. And what I'm using is a mixture of PVA glue and water. And I'm literally just painting it on. And uh, I read this up when using the vinyl and it makes it much, much tackier. And uh, the vinyl should stick to it with no problems at all. Now here we have a waste pipe that goes to the outside of the van. Obviously that's for the sink and it goes to an underbody tank. The tank here on the right, um, that is a waste tank 
and that is specifically designed for this van I bought it from CAK tanks and um, it literally it's molded to fit the shape of the underbody of the van so it was really useful now here we have the toilet and shower floor now in the top right hand corner there you can see a hole in the floor I've already cut the hole for the shower tray drain and that will go to the waste tanks via a one-way valve one of the issues with motorhomes is if you don't have a one-way valve on your shower drain if you hit the brakes a bit too hard what can happen is any waste water in the tank can end up bubbling up into your shower tray so it's very important to get a one-way valve now this is going to be the shower tray this is a piece of linoleum Lin linoleum is that right of kitchen lino basically and uh, it's obviously cut in such a way that it's going to sort of curve up at the edges because it's going to form a tray there we have it sort of being put into place and there is the finished thing glued into place with contact adhesive and obviously it will be sealed in the corners next we have another type of kitchen floor lino and that's basically stuck to the walls and of course the idea is it's going to make the walls nice and waterproof obviously it will need sealing into place um, but it is stuck in place with contact adhesive and as you can see it overlaps inside the tray so uh, obviously once that's all sealed up with mastic or colkin uh, it should make a nice waterproof shower environment back to the galley kitchen this is the main water supply it basically goes through a hole drilled in the top of the water tank and is attached to a pump a submersible pump that lives inside the water tank obviously submerged in the water here is the recently clad filling area of the fresh water tank that will eventually have a door on it as well everything's slowly starting to be clad over and now here goes the kitchen work surface obviously I've cut out a hole in the top of the work surface to fit the gas cooker and kitchen sink once again the entire work surface has been edged uh, using the method that I will show you in the video below a few detailed shots of the way the work surface has been cut to fit into the window recess there and here we have the sink and gas cooker that's the sink connected up and that obviously goes to the waste tank the only problem I have with this particular kitchen sink is it didn't have a hole for the tap so I had to make one and it wasn't pretty <laughs> but never mind it did work and it does a good job and doesn't leak so I'm quite happy about that here is the gas pipe to the hob nicely fitted into place and as you can see I've neatened everything off and it's all attached to the wall so hopefully it's going to stay out of the way and stay out of trouble now you can see the front of the galley kitchen has been clad over in one single large sheet of 6mm ply and that ply has been covered with the uh, the fablon I've been using a kind of a light maple colour um, for the stick on fablon and it looks absolutely fine now here we have the doors added and uh, the doors are actually made of conti board uh, I decided because I needed the, I wanted the thickness on the doors of the I think these are 15 mil thick and once again uh, there is a link below to the video where I show you exactly how I was able to edge these doors there you can see we finally got a proper door on the freshwater tank filling area now I did go around with this kind of rubberized edging strip wherever I could um, it wasn't particularly good I think basically because I had trouble fitting it it's got it's basically like a little bead with a flange on it and you tuck the flange into the join but because the joins were quite tight um, I had to cut some of the flange away in order for it to kind of look like that but um, it's okay it just kind of helps to neaten everything off um, especially on the straight edges now here is the hole for the island table leg unfortunately I couldn't put it exactly in the center where I wanted it uh, if you notice the lines that I've squig squiggled onto the floor uh, they represent the sort of the underbody chassis area 
and so I was a little bit restricted where I could put that hole in the end but that's no problem because I can just uh, match the connection to the table accordingly so the table will still be nice and central here we see it with a bit of floor lino down and it's starting to look pretty good I think managed to get some foam onto the chairs obviously that needs upholstering and here is the table which happened to be the original table from my old reno um, I'm kind of reusing it um, but as you can see the the corresponding island table leg adapter is offset in order to um, keep the table nice and central this is the gas locker door and as you can see it's sealed that uh, it's got like a draft excluder strip that runs all the way around the outside now I'm rubbish at using mastic so it looks messy as hell but um, it's completely sealed from the uh, the living compartment so that's not a problem now you may remember I mentioned earlier that I made the seat boxes too high here's the thing the island table leg was not long enough to um, compensate for the additional height of the seats so I had to put this ridiculous um, big block of wood under the table in order for the table to be at the right height anyway completely terrible arrangement and it looked really ridiculous so what I did was I built in an extra bit between the seats and then repositioned the island table leg and as you can see much much better so basically you can step up onto the seats and the seats are now at the right height um, because without that bit between the seats you you literally sat in the seat and your legs dangled um, so uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was a good compromise all round but having lived with the van for a little while now I think I may actually change the seats facing each other for one long bench seat and make it lower but uh, that's something I may get involved with next year. Here we have the bed made up and uh, obviously the table folds down between the two seats uh, and then the backrests from the, the two seats make up the bit in the middle and uh, so you can have yourself a six foot bed. Now this bed is exactly six foot long from the wall to the silver bit of the door unfortunately I'm six foot one so what I find at night is I tend to put my feet in the recess where the window is but uh, it's no big deal and uh, I can kind of live with it as long as I'm not camping out for too many nights at a time and here we finally have a picture of the finished thing with the furniture now upholstered I'm very fortunate enough to live uh, next door but a couple to an upholsterer so uh, the lady um, did the, uh, the proper upholstery for me. I was afraid with this pattern it might end up looking a bit like a curry house but um, actually no it's it's pretty well in proportion and I'm very very pleased with it. So another shot looking from the back doors down the front of the van and you can see the overhead storage area that's where I keep uh, the bedding and uh, bags and things like that. It's very very handy that storage area I use it all the time. There we have the rear seat box with the little door on the back giving access to it. And uh, that's quite a handy uh, little area to store things away. And you, you've got you know really good access to it from the back doors there. That's the loo and shower uh, finished. Got a big mirror on the front of it. And there we go. That's it. So we've gone literally from this original uh, works van to uh, this uh, sort of, you know, camper van now the last thing I've done is uh, I wasn't very happy with the amount of tint on the windows it felt like I was in a bit of a goldfish bowl so I went out and got some uh, window tinting film and uh, the last shots you see here are of the van uh, with the windows tinted out and it looks absolutely um, fine from inside it's only very slightly darker on the inside but you can see out no problems um, but obviously you have trouble looking in so uh, and I think obviously with the with the privacy windows it also looks a lot cooler so there we go that's it that's uh, how I built my uh, self-built motor caravan uh, van uh, it's very very straightforward the actual cost of the build I think 
uh, worked out. I think I've got a bunch of receipts that uh, add up to just about three thousand um, pounds, and that includes, you know, the windows and absolutely everything, including, you know, the extra, uh, either the driver's seat and you know all the big stuff uh, like the kitchen um, cooker and sink and everything. Um, but yeah, it's about three thousand in total for the conversion build. Now I could have racked that price up a long way if I'd have been including things like uh, water heaters and um, warm air heating and things like that but to be honest I didn't have any of those things on my last van I didn't have a fridge on my last van and I got on just fine without it you know uh, for a fridge I just use a regular cool box and that's good for days and uh, for hot water if I need you know uh, to heat any water up I just boil the kettle up so you know it's not a big deal and I've saved probably about two thousand pounds by not including those other items so there we go I'm gonna end this video now I hope that was useful to someone feel free to ask me any questions in the notes below um, I'll answer them if I can um, and there we go so thanks for watching guys have a great rest of the day and uh, I will no doubt see you in a future video